Seattle-based developer Tyler Carr set out to build an apartment in Boise, Idaho. That's a Tier 3 market. And you're probably wondering, Jordan, you say Tier 3 and blah, 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 blah. Okay, USA map. So uh, this is the map of the United States. And if you look over here, you will see this is the Bay Area. And uh, on the Bay Area, you have, this is a Tier 1 market. So San Jose, San Francisco, and blah, blah, blah. Then you have uh, New York. That's also a Tier 1 market. And then you have, uh, let's see here. I'm so terrible with directions. Boston, that's another Tier 1 market. And you then have, I us say Chicago. When I say Tier 1 market, it basically means high incomes, uh, stable jobs, uh, they're hubs for economic ac activity, um, highly educated populace, yada, yada, yada. And you have Tier 2 markets. You have Sacramento, uh, Los Angeles, San Los Angeles Tier 1 market. Then you have Tier 2 markets. You have Sacramento, I would say Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, um, probably Atlanta. Uh, Miami could be Tier 1. We'll see. Uh, North Carolina. These are up-and-coming markets. Uh, incomes are increasing, but not as expensive as Tier 1. They also have um, good jobs, educated population, but there's also a lot of open land, and so property is still relatively cheap. Then you have Tier 3 markets. You can say uh, anything in Arkansas, anything in Alabama, uh, Kentucky, Missouri, Tennessee, um, it, Nebraska, South Dakota, um, Minneapolis, maybe tier two, I don't know. But anyways, when interest rates rise, the markets that get hit, for, hit first are the tier three markets that I mentioned. And then they get hit the hardest because it. what happens is, is real estate is a valuations are dependent upon the an interest rates because that determines how much debt you can get to either buy or then you can sell and someone can get debt to buy your property. And when interest rates increase, then you can't afford as much debt. So then you're missing great conversations in our Discord right now. Why aren't you joining? Hit the join button. Two ninety nine gets you access, plus you get access to all of our old live streams, our research lab, which we post uh, AI research and summaries from me and Joe. You get access to our robotics and drones channel, off topics, our bets and predictions channel. We also have a jobs and career channel where people can just post jobs and things they're hiring for. And also if you have a project, you want feedback on it, then you can throw it in there too. And we have fantastic feedback. Yeah, I honestly think the Svik podcast is the most grounded pragmatic take on AI tech outside of the YouTube channels that almost only ever read and evaluate the research papers. Like it's more informed on actual technology than most business podcasts. And it's more grounded than pretty much all of the AI hype YouTubers. So anyways, join the community. It's fantastic. We've got a lot, of, a lot of good content in here. Join, 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 join. Bye. That negatively impacts property prices, property values. So these tier three markets that people were going into because things were getting more expensive in other areas, um, people then decided, hey, you know what? Uh, oh, Ohio. Ohio. <sighs> I kind of want to say, I don't know. It's definitely not tier one. I'd probably say tier I'd say three, um, but that's just me. Uh, Indiana, Indiana, I'd say that's tier three also. Um, Michigan, probably, I'd say three also. It's, it's it's making some improvements, but it just got wiped out because everything was invested in the car companies, and that just destroyed their whole manufacturing base. Denver. Colorado, I'd probably say tier two, um, but I I would be looking at looking at Denver, um, and then New Mexico, mostly tier three, maybe Albuquerque, maybe tier two. Uh, eh. Anyway, but like again, you there's there's no like again investing is more of an art than anything else, uh, and that's where a lot of engineers. It, kind of get honked up because they're like, oh, there must be a spreadsheet that perfectly tells you what to do in real estate. It's like, no, there isn't. Because if there is, then people would know the future and they would gain prices and there would be no market. Everything would be fair, adequately priced. So, what am I getting at? Tier 3 markets are getting, crashed, are getting hurt right now because all the hot money that went into there 
um, is now drying up and people overpaid for properties and now they can't get people to buy them at the current rates. And so they're in a lot of pain. To make things worse now as tier two markets, they're getting hit by the interest rates. It's not as hard as three, but the ones that over index to start asking Google and Facebook and their big tech companies to do satellite offices for all the HR people, all the finance people, the marketing people, and the sales people that all got just laid off, they're hurting in those areas. That's why Austin's been brutalized recently. Had a lot of people from the Bay Area flying over there and say, oh, it's only 400000 a house? I'll take three. And just jacking up the price on everything. And then now they're laid off and now they don't have that easy money anymore. And now people can't afford those properties. So um, going back to the story, if you go over here, uh, so Boise, Idaho is definitely tier three. So this guy was so desperate. He's in Seattle. He had all this money. He was desperate to set out to build apartments in Boise where rents were uh, rising the fastest in the country. In 2021, his company bought land near the growing downtown with plans to develop 104 rental units. Okay, so there are... Um, let me just open up a Google Doc so I don't brutalize you. With uh, Actually, I'll open a new doc over here. Okay. So there are multiple ways to invest in real estate. But first, what I always tell people is, first... First things for us do one for any investing, and I'm not first of all I'm not a financial planner. You know, speak to a financial planner. But first thing you do for investing, save money, like lower your expenses where you can. But don't be like crazy and only eat top ramen. Enjoy life. There's certain things you indulge in. If you want a gaming rig, buy a gaming rig. If you want to go on vacation every now and go on vacation every now and then. You're young, you're able bodied, you can still run around and do stuff. You're gonna look back when you're loaded and say. And, and, you know, from if you're loaded and didn't, didn't experience life, and now say, I wish I could do it, but now my body's kind of broken. Well, I know, ooh, we're going to live forever, but just, just, just assume for the downside. Okay, so as you're saving money, two, you're going to max out your 401k. If your employer has a match, ma max that out. If you want to do super, super backdoor, backdoor Roth or whatnot, go for it. You're going to do index funds where, where, you, where you can. Okay, so after doing all that, you're like, okay, I want to invest in real estate. Investing in real estate. If you're watching this show, you're most likely a tech employee. The highest return you're ever going to get in your money is you doing your job and acquiring equity at different companies. That's where you're going to get the most money. So your real estate strategy should be in line with that. So here are strategies that you should not do. Fix and flip. because that is like a second full-time job and you need to run it like a business. People see you as a rich mark and will upcharge you on all repair expenses. It is a bit like gambling because if the market goes down, you are screwed. Okay, so uh, what you shouldn't do as a tech employee or full-time employee okay fix and flip what's the next one um i think tax lien a lot there's some time time and time involved can be can be risky better better return on doing something doing something else okay what other ones do i not like people doing I think those are the majors. Okay. What you should should start with. You can, because valuations are so freaking ridiculous right now, you can easily start with a Vanguard real estate REIT as well, well diversified. So it might have a touch of touch of single family homes, apartments, commercial, industrial. So you won't lose your ass completely. Okay. So you're doing that. 
Now you're like, okay, I want to get to the next level and I want to actually own physical property. You can do, if you want to, single family home up to no more than, I think it's like four or five units, whatever fan, Fanny, the Fanny, Fanny may, Fanny may require. Actually, I'd say start with single family home or duplex. Dip your toe into real estate. Do not do something stupid like buy an apartment complex off the jump. Uh, uh, well, uh, that's what I did. Uh, your dad owned a lot of houses. Yeah, but he gradually went in there because my grandpa was like, buy property. Like back in the 60s in the Bay Area, my grandpa was like, just buy everything you can buy. Just do it. Well, my dad's like, uh, no, just do it. And it was a good decision. Okay, so dip your toe into real estate. Do not do something stupid like buy an apartment complex off the jump because you might not like managing real estate. You're also going to get a property manager. And when you are pricing your property, include property management fee, capital, expenditure, expenditures, repairs, etc. So you want to in your in your valuation model, you want to put as much fat in there as possible. Just assuming that when I say fat, fud, uh, a, mar a big margin of error in case the unexpected happens. Insurance rates go up, roof goes out, all these different things. So you do, you do single family home and you do duplex. Okay. And then you might want to scale up and then eventually go into maybe like uh, quads, quads or six six plex or apartment but that's like when you're you 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 now, you now have experience okay and then the last thing is this is this is also a full-time job i don't tell people what it, development development highest highest possible return highest possible risk okay Daniel says, I own properties for the last 17 years. It's a lot of problems if they're old, people not paying. Daniel, what area are you in? And that, that's really true. Sometimes people like in this market right now, people like, oh, there's a steal on the property and it's like 100 years old and you're going to have to replace everything and it's located in a crap area. Uh, another thing is, uh, Jordan, what is the most important real estate metric to lo look at before buying? crime tells the whole entire story you see murders down there brutal assaults theft carjackings ask yourself would anyone want to raise your family there no no one wants to raise their family there then people who are making a lot of money and doing well aren't going to be renting there if they're not going to be renting there then your rents are not going to be that high if rents aren't that high and you can't bring in enough money to cover your costs or enough for you to repair the property if you can't do that then slowly but surely you put yourself in slumlord territory okay Okay, so land is also good, just land owned in New Jersey and Colorado. Land, I was going to say, if you're in the path of progress, that's that's one thing. I, I've been very, for me, it's like land speculation. I know the founding fathers did it and whatnot. It has worked for people. Uh, I usually just like, I want some type of just income stream coming off the property. I think land is, it could work for some people, but it's maybe it's you have land in your portfolio in addition to things that are already producing income. It's like a lands for the speculation end and then the apartments and the houses or the duplexes and the houses are for just getting, bringing income in. But Daniel, this is a fantastic point you're making. I'm glad you're here to chat with us. Okay. So let's go back. We're kind of running out of time, about 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, in 2021, his company bought land near the growing downtown with plans to develop 104 rental units. Uh, three years later, his land remains an empty lot. When market conditions deteriorate, a strategy no longer made financial sense. Interest rates and construction costs rose, Carr said, and those two things really converged to make the project unviable. During the biggest apartment construction boom in decades, a growing number of development developers can't make the numbers work to get started on their projects or can't get the money to complete them. Higher interest rates, tire lending conditions, and flattening rents as part of the, in parts of the country have left property companies from California to Florida waiting for financing that might not come soon. Also, but not just California. We don't, Actually, California side, we don't build crap for housing, which is a problem, but some areas just built, built a lot, thank God. In Minnesota, like they built so much, rents just crashed. And so 
you and they crash like 30 40 percent in certain areas and when people are doing these pro formas performers to buy a property they usually go okay so we're gonna buy at this price this apartment complex and the rents are gonna go up every two percent and then we're gonna get a lot of money yay what if you did minnesota you bought something and then the rents went down 30 percent a game over flip 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 game over you're done because why you're done because your pro forma also expects that you're going to be able to sell this property for a much higher price than you bought it. And now that your operating income is down 30, 40%, <laughs> you're getting it for, if you sell it, you're actually, you're lucky if you're still covering your operating costs. And then if you sell it, you're not going to, you might, you're probably going to get a haircut on the principal you put in. So the amount of time the average apartment project spends between construction and authorization and when construction begins has risen to nearly 500 days, a 45% increase from 2019, according to property data from Yardy Matrix. Average number of days between permitting and start of construction. Yeah, so people are getting permitted and then interest rates are going up and then they're like, oh, hmm, I'm good. I'm going to hold on. I'm, gonna, I'm a land bank now. But that doesn't work if you're, if let's say you did a syndication, it's a seven year deal, we're going to buy it, build it and flip it's like well no i i bought the land but i have to get this money back people so at some point i have to pull the trigger or just you know we'll have to eat it or you get the worst thing a capital call when you invest in some of these deals it turns out that the, for this thing to work we need to oh sorry we, the numbers are wrong the whole entire hvac of roof needs to be redone this apartment complex it's going to cost five million dollars if you want to still have a position in this deal you need to come up with a hundred thousand dollars to stay in part of it like or in venture capital, same thing happens too. And if you don't, your previous equity goes away. And that's when the lawyers get involved. <laughs> it's really bad. Very easy to get into deals when things are going up. Um, but then once things get rocky, everyone's getting the lawyers out. Developers are also launching fewer projects amid financing crunch. Multifamily buildings starts fell to an annual rate of uh, 32,000 units in April, the lowest a April rate since 2020, according to the Census Bureau. While most developers get uh, get tripped up before real activity begins, a few have found trouble after starting construction, leaving them with half-built properties. In downtown Phoenix, work stopped last fall in a 25-story apartment tower that was most of the way up. Contractors filed claims for millions of dollars of unpaid work. Ooh, ooh, that's brutal. That is brutal. Oh, so, so my dad used to run an HVAC company, and um, he was doing a project for a firefighter. And my dad had like a lien on on the. You always get a mechanics lien on the property because people will screw you. So oh, yeah, I'll pay you, and then you get the work done. They, no, I'm not paying you. And if you have a lien, then you you could try to take him to court, but you're not gonna get anything but if you have a lien you can you can help for sale on the property and either it's like okay give me my money or i'm gonna force sale on this property well th they had a plumber on there who's a newbie he put in 20 or 30 grand of plumbing work in there didn't have a mechanics lien and the firefighter who owned it was like i'm not gonna pay you and there's nothing you can really do it's taking me to court and this guy was just uh he was a laborer didn't have an education so Instead, what he did is, I'm going to go through a street justice and just basically beat the crap out of the firefighter and put him in the hospital. It, it's it's brutal. Um, it, it Real estate is a tough business to get into. Um, but Phoenix is also a notoriously cyclical market. So I had a lot of Googlers back in 2019, 2020s coming to me. He's like, oh, I just so expensive. I can't find good investment opportunities, but I'm thinking about going to Phoenix and things like that. I'm like, that's a very cyclical market. It's hot right now. I guess interest rates are low, but things will turn. And, and that's one thing people don't understand is the pendulum swings. Like, what creates an environment for high interest rates then creates an environment for low interest rates, and then the low interest rates creates an environment for high interest rates again, and it keeps on the pendulum swings because we just over index to a certain way of investing which then increases the returns for an opposite form or an opposite way of investing we certainly are seeing a decline in construction said robert dietz chief economist national associate of home builders deals and financing have dried up some declines uh, were inve inevitable about half a million new apartments opened in 2023 the most in 40 years based on what is already under construction Analysts expect similar numbers to be completed in 2024. In some cities, a surge in building has meant there are more apartments that can be quickly leased without cutting rents, making some investors skittish about adding more units. I mean, this is all great for people. This is fantastic. I, I love it. 
I mean, a lot of apartment complex owners were just like, her, 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 uh, we're making a lot of money, free markets, yay, you know, if we increase our rents, that's the way it is, deal with it. Now it's like, ha, 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 free markets cuts both ways. Too much supply, you lower those rents, and you'd be good to everyone else. Yeah. So I'm happy to see this. Uh, I'm happy to see people fail, but. I'm happy to see people want to start a family or not sorry, just people want to live and not get gouged by expensive prices. I'm not saying this is an argument for government involvement. What I'm saying is just let's, let's let people live good lives and not have to put 50% of their rent money or their, their check towards rent, which is like ridiculous. But banks have other issues that keep them from lending as much to apartment buildings, builders here. And many regional banks are souring on the commercial real estate loans already in the books. Yes, because a lot of these commercial real estate loans are not 30-year fixed back by the government. They are seven-year, sometimes they're floating rate, and they are um, – well, you can you can pay for an option that gives you rate protection, but it usually costs tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how the interest rates are. And a lot of syndicators are like, ah, uh, we don't need that. The federal government's never going to raise interest rates, and then it raises them, and now they're bankrupt. So um, – because commercial banks have this money on their books, have these properties on their books, now they have to go into conservatorship until these apartment complexes, and they don't want to do that. And they're doing a conservatorship because the rent doesn't cover the loan anymore, and it's a really bad scenario for the banks. So we should continue to see more pain, and that's why real estate people are so desperate to say, lower interest rates. I don't care if inflation is still here. Just lower them. Just do whatever. Just keep lowering them. Uh, their current portfolios are getting marked down, and they don't have that much to lend said David Frosch, chief executive of Fidelity Bank Corp, funding a California real estate lender. Uh, that means developers need to raise more cash from investors to build, but many investors are more cautious today as rent growth flattens and new projects look less profitable at today's higher interest rates and construction costs. The numbers don't add up, Frosch said. Yeah, my uh, cousin right now is, for his bank, he, he focuses on um, the repossessions of these of these commercial buildings and then managing them right now. And he just says he's just getting projects coming to him left and right in commercial building space. So I mean, it's bad, but this is apartments right here so far. The Worcester mass, about a dozen apartment projects with more than 2000 units are delayed. According to a May report from the city's economic development office, struggling projects include buildings with as many as 200 market rate apartments and affordable housing said Joshua Lee Smith, a real estate attorney working with developers who have stalled projects in Worcester. Uh, the interest rates are at a point where a lot of investors are sitting on the sidelines. Yep, something has to give. You have people who made the investment and they're like, no, I don't. I want the original pre-low uh, interest rate environment price. I don't want to pay what the current price is. Now, for people who have more money than God, they can sit this out and kind of land bank and just sit on the property and wait until things get better again. But for a lot of these syndicators, they can't do that. So it's who's going to blink first here? Who's going to be the one saying, because... Real estate, there's different industry, there's different types of um, business models that are more uh, that are more, I would say, zero sum in nature or have less margins. And I'd say real estate is probably on top of the list. So you know, for you to get a good deal on the property, sometimes, sometimes another person is taking a bath, um, and that's kind of reality. Whereas in tech, there is a lot of competition, but usually you're dealing with gross margins anywhere from like you know. Google's gross margins for what, forty percent or something, something ridiculous. So there's a lot of there's a lot of profit. So you can be better to the employee. Well, back in my day when I was at Google, you can give them more money and more equity and not lay them off randomly. When real estate's very dog eat dog. Okay, cities in Worcester and Boise, uh, whose relative affordability has attracted droves of newcomers in recent years, had had been overdue for a spate of new housing construction in August 2021. Annual asking rent growth in Boise hit a record of 25%, according to property software company RealPage. Home prices in the surrounding county shop 79% in three years between 2019 and 2022. Yes, my cousin, she uh, was a lawyer at Google. She actually moved out um, to Boise and just, just got a fucking, excuse me, I cussed her. I got a palace, like a big, nice house and everything. And so all the people in Boise were like, what the hell is this crap? All these city slickers coming through here and just taking our houses and jacking up all of our prices. And that's why people in Texas are pissed right now because you might have been living in Texas since like the 50s or something and your property taxes has been whatever. And then now I randomly come, well, 
a, not me, a Googler comes in or a Facebooker comes in and then goes buys the property next to you for like 10x what you got your property for or something ridiculous, which then causes your tax bill to skyrocket. And so now taxes is going through their own property 13, Prop 13 moment, which California did in the 1970s for our inflation, which basically says, hey, people who are on fixed income or people who got in here early, why is their property tax based upon some Johnny come lately who's just buying these properties for ridiculous, ridiculous costs? You know, I live on a fixed income. I might be a teacher. I'm just retired on a 401k. Let's have some protection. So Prop 13 was passed. And so, yeah, also HOA, yeah, right, Daniel. Daniel's just coming out here and dropping bombs. Daniel, I need to see you more in Discord also because uh, you have a lot of great things to say. And also I need more people in our investment, um, where investment and business channel to post good content too. Love to hear from you in there. But yes, I hate HOAs. I think they're the Antichrist. In San Francisco, my friend was going to buy a condo in um, Redwood District. And it turned out his H his monthly HOA fee was eight hundred bucks a month. I was like, <laughs> it's like no English. What? I was like, there's no way I'm paying. That's like that's the property I was buying up in Sacramento. Like that's that eight hundred bucks was more than I pay in principal, insurance, and taxes for a month. <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous. Okay. And HOAs are all of HOAs are worthless and they're full of people who have power trips. Or can actually if we had a way of DNA sequence people who are, are members of HOA, and then we could DNA sequence people who are who are part of the alignment AI ethicists, the the, the f extremist lunatics, I bet there'd be a lot of commonality, and I bet they would. You could switch them both in roles. You couldn't tell the difference. They would just oh, a AI person's like oh, I'm an HOA now. Okay, my job's just to make sure everyone's li life's a living hell here, and to make all these random rules. Like no, sorry, you can't put poinsettias um, on your deck during Christmas. That's offensive to some people. Like, you know, it works. Okay. In late 2022, Boise apartment developer Galena uh, Opportunity was about a third of the way through construction of a 350 unit project when a ma major investor decided to back out. Contractors filed millions of dollars of claims against the company for portions of unpaid work and cranes came down. Yeah, I was going to do an apartment complex deal in Houston um, before COVID hit. It looked like a really good deal. It was penciling out pretty well. Did really good. We, our team did good DD on it. And then COVID was breaking out. And I was like, hmm, hmm, you know what? Let's just wait on that. And crisis averted. Okay. The project in Boise suburb of Meridian remains stalled with Galena tries to court new partners. Galena is proposing other changes to its plans to bring down construction costs, such as switching up the materials it had originally chosen for the building facade, said Brawl Trucks, the company's president. He hopes to resume construction with help of new investment later this year. Other builders have made bigger changes to save the projects, including Carr. His company is refashioning part of his Boise development into affordable housing, so it qualifies for government tax credits. That means the company doesn't need to put up as much equity to move forward. Carr hopes to start building in the fall. It's been way more brain damage, Carr says, but I see it as a great opportunity. I'm sinking my teeth into something new. Okay, great. That was a really cool story. I hope everyone, well, I hope those people make it out and that person doesn't get completely screwed. Um, I wanted to share some news with you all regarding our live streaming schedule going forward. It's same Monday through uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 11 a.m. PST, 12 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. Um, and Mondays are going to be an hour free public stream. Tuesdays are going to be free public stream. It's going to be 30 minutes of me and Joe. And then the back end, 30 minutes is going to be an interview. So for next week, we're going to have Amon and Dave McClure come back on Tuesday. And look, actually, is that fake news? Let me take my calendar real quick. That could be fake news. Um, yep, they're coming on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday... We're going to start at 11 a.m. to 11.30, but that part of the stream is only for supporters. So if you're a supporter for five bucks a month, not only do you get Discord access, our AI summaries, um, news that I'm sharing in the Discord community, and then access to our 30-plus um, episodes, you get access to 
our private stream from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. That's only for paid members. I'll send out links in advance so everyone has it. Then at 11.30 a.m., 12 p.m., we go back to public and free. We do an interview. So if you like the content want to support the show, hit that join button. If you're at two ninety nine, go to 5. If you're at 5, go to 10 if you want to. It's fantastic. Anyways, thank you all for joining. Um, I appreciate it. And you all have a fantastic day. Hey, we want the following people on the show. Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, Andre Kripathy, Demis Hasibus, Aron Sharinas, Brett Taylor, Mark Andreessen, Eugenia Kuda, Fiji Simo, Kimberly Powell, James Bedlock, Stephen Wolfram. If you know them, tell them nicely. Sick wants them here via Twitter, LinkedIn, email, or if you can, set up an intro email uh, with me and them at info at svinvestorsclub.com. Thank you.